Hello, Bookman here, and this is the section of the Pilot Custom 74 Demonstrator Fountain Pen. As advertised, that's how it comes apart into two pieces. Actually, it's four pieces, not two but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. This is the Pilot Custom 74 Demonstrator Fountain Pen fully assembled. Let's disassemble it. When I remove the barrel from the section, I like to post the cap because the clip will prevent the barrel from rolling off the table. I want to show you something I saw in uh, Stephen Brown's video of the disassembly of the Pilot Custom 74 fountain pen. Uh, it turns out he didn't get quite as far in the disassembly as I'm going to get uh, in this one, but uh, he did uh, sh show me several things that I was impressed by, and this is one of them. Yeah, to start the removal of the collar with the nib and the feed attached to it, just twist the converter counterclockwise. And the collar comes completely dislodged from the bottom of the section. Now it's hanging in there because it's still attached to the converter. So let us carefully remove the converter because it's inked. This is an inked pen. And The collar, with the nib and the feed attached, comes right out. Now we're not going to be uh, concerned about this part of the pen for this demonstration, so I'm not going to disassemble this any further. I'm just going to put it off to the side. And now we're down to the nitty gritty. The two pieces of the section that are really four. Now before I explain how there are four pieces here instead of two. I want to tell you how it came about that I was able to finally separate these pieces. I'll refer to them as the two main pieces of the section. When I first bought this pen a year and a half ago, the very first time I submerged the nib and feed and part of the grip into the uh, bottle of ink, ink got trapped in this space between the plastic grip and the metal part. And when I tried to clean it after I got to the end of the uh, uh, converter full of ink and I wanted to swap inks and I cleaned the pen, I got down to this part of the disassembly and I couldn't get this grip to budge. Now, but I could plainly see threads in here, and I don't know whether you can see them uh, all that well. I'm going to try to get them into focus for you. But right here, just inside where the, um, where the plastic part of the grip starts, you can see threads. Anybody that owns this uh, version of the pen can see threads in there. If you own a solid color version of the pen, you, you don't see threads. It's... The, the, the section is solid color, and you might be misled into thinking that this is one fused unit. Well, if you try to take it apart, it might as well be, because uh, these two things were so tight, they might as well have been welded steel. Uh, I, I, I couldn't get them to budge. So here was this uh, ink inside the, the, uh, the, the section, plainly visible, an eyesore after a while and annoying because I knew these two things had to be able to come apart. There would be no reason to have threads in there if they couldn't come apart, but I couldn't make them budge. And then not long after I got the pen, I saw Stephen Brown's video on the disassembly of the Pilot Custom 74 and I thought, oh goody, now I'm going to finally be able to take these two pieces apart so that I can clean that ink out of the inside of the section. That that eyesore 
uh, ink that's probably in the process of staining the inside of the grip right now. Well, right then. So I watched his video and it turned out when he got to this part of the section, he couldn't get those two pieces to budge either. And he had ink uh, inside that uh, he wanted to clean out and uh, he couldn't get these two pieces to budge. And he decided, well, if he tried to do it any more forcefully, he might break something. So he wasn't going to force it anymore. He was just going to live with it. And I thought that's, that's good advice. But what happened after that is that every time I cleaned the pen, I would give it one good twist. I mean, just one. And then I would quit. But every time I cleaned it, I would, I would do that. I would just give it a good twist to see what would happen. And after a year and a half of that, last week, I finally felt movement. And I thought, okay, I'm going to risk it now. So I gave it another, you know, semi-forceful twist, and it came right off. And what I discovered when I took this off was that there was a chrome washer trying to make a run for it. It fell right off the end of the, uh, the this metal part of the section because I didn't know it was there. But there it is, a chrome washer. It goes on the uh, nib and feed side of a flange. Uh, right here in the middle of the section there is a ridge, a metallic ridge, and on the converter side of that ridge, there's a tiny O-ring. You can see the O-ring now. Uh, when, I, when I modify it, I've, I've added my own piece to this thing. It's, so now there are five pieces on this uh, section, but um, right now there are only four, and this O-ring is on the converter side of the flange. On the nib and feed side goes this chrome washer. So you have the metal conduit that makes up the bulk of the section. You have the O-ring, you have the chrome washer, and then you have the plastic grip. And now the section is assembled, fully assembled. But as I say, I, I uh, added my own modification here. I was concerned that uh, you know just getting that piece off wasn't going to be enough because I wanted to prevent ink from getting in there in the future. I, and I had a tool that was perfect for the job. It was another O-ring. This one was a leftover from the uh, container of O-rings I got from Goulet Pens for converting platinum preppies into eyedroppers. So I simply took one of these leftover O-rings and I put it on the outside up against that chrome washer and it just fits right on there like that. Kind of makes the smaller uh, O-ring on the other side of the flange disappear, but but now I can put the grip on. I can tighten this thing down as tight as I want. I mean that's really on there tight, but it comes right off. And while I've gotten a little bit of ink in here now, because um, I've been removing the pieces and so I've gotten ink in there uh, in the in the process of doing that. I've inked this thing twice in the last week and no ink has actually leaked into that space. So this O-ring is holding. So there it is. There are four pieces to this thing and if you add the O-ring from Goulet Pens for the conversion of the Platinum Preppy into an eyedropper, you'll be able to keep ink out of there in the future. Now, the subtitle of this video is uh, Tiny Strokes Fell Great Oaks, because I'm telling you, 
If you have one of these pens and you have not been able to separate the plastic grip from the metal part inside, keep at it. Eventually you'll be able to uh, unscrew the plastic grip from the metal part. And when you do, give it a thorough cleaning. Hopefully by then it won't have become permanently stained. Uh, and then get yourself one of those O-rings from Goulet Pens for converting the Platinum Preppy into an eyedropper. Stick it on the end on the uh, nib and feed side up against that chrome washer, put the grip on, tighten it down, and that should keep the ink out in the future. All right, there you have it. Thank you for your uh, attention and um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.